Hi, I'm Lei, and welcome to my channel. I make new art videos every Friday. Today's video is a speed painted Sailor Pluto based on my piece that I drew for Inktober and Fixed Up. I actually made a video all about my process for self-critiquing your art to fix mistakes, where I discuss the changes I made between the finished inks and the Inktober version. You can find that video linked in the top right corner card thingy if you haven't already seen it. Holy crow, guys. I haven't worked in watercolor in ages, and to be honest, I still consider myself a total newbie to anything involving paint. I've studied books on watercolor, I've watched tutorials and speed paints on YouTube and Skillshare, and a lot of my favorite artists work in watercolor. I just tend to reach for digital more frequently since it involves less setup and I trust digital more. I did have a lot of issues with finishing this one, and to be honest, I didn't trust myself to be able to do it. That's part of the reason why I never ended up painting my Lady Lovely Goths... Lady Lovely Locks... Goth makeover piece a few months back. I really wanted to, but ended up chickening out. I knew I couldn't do that with this one, and it would be worth it in the end, so I had to commit and push through. You can't learn a new medium if you don't practice, and sometimes you do need to force yourself to accomplish something in art that makes you uncomfortable or wary. I do find watercolor really fun though, and I definitely enjoyed working on this piece, even if it would get frustrating when I would end up with paint outside of my line work. And well, let's just put a pin in that and I'll get back to it in just a moment. As you probably noticed, I forgot to film the process of working on the background. Sorry about that. I'm a genius, I know. The background was pretty basic though. I played a lot with different brushes to create splatter and with different ways of producing texture, using salt at first and then paper towel to make things look even rougher. I really like how it turned out, and I think it's an improvement in every way off of my last watercolor piece. I hope next time to be more adventurous and do something with more color, but baby steps. Okay, back to that pin from earlier. I went through a lot of mistakes working on this one. I really need to learn how to control my water and my brush since both let me down on a number of occasions. Most obvious is the bow, which I did in Holbein's Crimson Lake, which is non-staining, but it's not easy lifting. In case you aren't familiar with watercolor, some paints lift really easily when you use a cotton bud or a paper towel while it's still wet, or even if you wet the spot, often it reactivates the paint and you can lift it that way. This paint didn't want to do that no matter what I tried, which I should have been aware of since it is labeled on Holbein's website as being transparent and non-staining, okay cool, but it isn't listed as easy lifting so I should have been more conscious that it wouldn't be easy to pick up when I made a mistake. It also wasn't really the color of her bow at first, I hoped it would look a darker red more maroon so I needed to do another layer and mix a color that was more close to what I was looking for to get it where I wanted it. I did print the line art and so at any time I could have printed another version and started over from scratch. You guys wouldn't even have to know, but I wanted to present this speed paint with all my mistakes and ways I tried to fix them because I think anyone deserves to know how I did that. And also, in some cases, people don't care. Watercolor isn't a perfect, pristine medium. Water is finicky, and sometimes no matter of skill or talent can prevent it from doing what it wants to do. I mean, obviously, I'm really obsessed with a certain clean look to my art, so it did bother me when I went over the lines. I know I need to loosen up, I need to learn to be more expressive so my work doesn't feel stiff and unnatural. I have plans for next week's video and hopefully I will be just that. We will see how it goes. 
So let's talk Sailor Moon for a moment, because I know this video is gonna be long and I'll have time to do that. I don't know if I really know anyone who dislikes Sailor Moon. I'm sure there are a million think pieces about its lasting power and its effect on young people, but holy crow, I don't know anything that really resonates so much with a whole population of everyone. And all genders love it, not just the little girls in the schoolyard screaming moon prison power at the top of their lungs and getting dizzy pretending to transform into a sailor senshi. Not that we did that. And yeah, I was 9 or 10 when the dub of Sailor Moon hit North America. Actually, super weird story, when I got into Gundam Wing, it played sort of late-ish on YTV, which is a local kids channel here in Canada, and it was really the only channel we had that played anime where I grew up in Nova Scotia. So I needed to tape Gundam Wing every night because I wasn't allowed to stay up late to watch it, and DVR didn't exist because... In case you didn't catch on, I'm old. Like, walk to school in a blizzard uphill both ways old. So, one day I get home from school, and I'm watching the latest episode of Gundam Wing that I have on a VHS tape, cause old, and as the credits roll, this commercial for Sailor Moon comes on, and it's this crazy rhyme with a guy singing it. I don't remember anything of the rhyme, except the last line goes something like, Sailor Venus, she rhymes with... I can't say that on TV. I wish I remembered it because I only ever caught that commercial a few times and always late at night on YTV. Anyone else who was a kid in the 90s who remembers that commercial? Or is this like one of those Bernstein Bears memory things? What was I even getting at, you guys? This was probably one of my weirder tangents. I should just make story time videos instead of going on tangents during my art videos. Anyway, so I was a kid when Sailor Moon came to America, and this was a time when computers weren't in every household, so spoilers weren't invented yet. I mean, they were, but you couldn't wander onto social media and get ruined for the ending of the latest Thor movie. I had access to a computer with internet, so I knew of the Outer Senshi a lot earlier than most kids my age, and I was always fascinated with them. I mean, every new Senshi in Sailor Moon was this magical moment of meeting a new character and learning their powers and seeing their transformation sequence. Before I had access to the internet, Sailor Jupiter was my absolute favorite, and I dressed up as her in grade 4 or 5. Thank you for sewing my costume, Mom. But the moment I discovered the Outer Senshi, they were so much more mysterious and amazing to me. So, of course, I connected with perhaps the most mysterious of all, Sailor Pluto. Which is kind of funny since I also love tragic stories and who is more tragic than Sailor Saturn? Plus, Sailor Saturn wears my favorite color, which is obviously purple. But something about Sailor Pluto really resonated with me as this lone individual out on the edge of time and space. This is why I love Doctor Who so much now, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. I am revealing all kinds of crazy things about myself today, aren't I? I should also mention, I do have a thing about characters who are either green, or wear green, or have green hair. Piccolo from Dragon Ball Z, Fario from Magic Knight Rareth, Polaris from the X-Men, Blink from the X-Men, dresses in green during Age of Apocalypse. Yeah, it's a weird thing. Green isn't even one of my favorite colors. Like, what even? My only issue with Sailor Pluto is a lack of continuity, which is going to bring me back to talking about the painting. I promise. Perhaps more so than any other senshi, her uniform colors change depending on whether you're looking at the manga, or the animes, or at figurines. It's kind of weird, and made this painting a bit trickier. For example, her bow is sometimes bright red, sometimes it's maroon, sometimes it's brown, such as on my figure arts figurine of her. So I went with a sort of maroony color for that reason. And also, because all the senshi are fairly colorful, I don't feel brown is very fitting. 
With this painting, I wanted a very cell-shaded style, partially because it suits her as a character, and partially because I needed to work on my blending and didn't want to mess her up. The issue with trying to achieve a cell style in watercolor is that, as you can see on the garnet rod, when you apply dry paint over dry paint, it dries with a hard line which was fine on her staff because it's metallic and adds a very different texture from the rest of her. Unfortunately, I did a wash for her skin before remembering this to be the case, so I did have some issues when I got back to shading her skin. All in all, I'm pretty happy with how she turned out. For a second completed watercolor piece ever in my life, I think she's as close to my original vision as I could have hoped. I plan on doing a lot more watercolor pieces because it is one of those mediums I really want to explore further, more so than anything else, so look forward to that. As I mentioned in my Inktober videos, there's a number of pieces from October that I want to finish as paintings. Thank you so much for watching this. If you liked my weird rambling, please give this a like and subscribe for more art videos. I upload every Friday. Have a great day and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye!